This is the plan by Klaus Schwab. They're telling us that there's going to be a major global shock, but they're not telling you what it is. They're calling the Pope the prophet. We see Revelation 13 being on full display, really. And what we're seeing from this event from December 12th is control, 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 control. They want to control every aspect of your life. What we have planned ahead of us is a planned major catastrophe. Craig, many of our viewers know about COP28, but they have no idea what is about to transpire. But um, okay, I want you to give us an update on what's going on. What's happening is that COP28 is the conference of the parties. Daniel 927 says, and he shall confirm a covenant with many. So I did a little research on the many, what the many means, and it means the populace or everyone. So the king that's mentioned in Daniel 927 will confirm a covenant with many, with everyone for a period of seven years, one week. Now, if some people say, yeah, but haven't there been other seven year covenants? What makes this one different? What, what makes it different is it's it's with everyone. It's not just with Israel. It's not just with this party or that party. This one was, is with the whole earth. And it's oh. for seven years through 2030. So they have this thing marked until COP 35, which is 2,550 days from, from December 12th. Well, you know, we've heard of Agenda 2030, and we knew now, you know, from your other interviews that we they were going to have, you know, for COP28, a seven-year plan. But now they're like, you know, ex excelling things with like saying, we've got to push things, you know, right away uh, for the next two years. And I'm seeing articles saying that we've gone past, you know, with the climate, that the temperature has been worse than ever before. I mean, they're acting very frantic. Yeah, and then just within the last few days, that Dubai, where they're going to do this, gets severely flooded by, by this huge storm. And they had several feet of water on the road. So it's like, I go, how fitting is this that this happens right before this event? And so if they follow the storm track, it's like this is one massive storm with, with several feet of water everywhere. Oh, my goodness. You know, I heard about it and I never even thought about how they would connect saying, see, we're in uh, we've we're in desperation now. Yeah. So this, this is an emergency. They're going to call this is an emergency based on multiple issues. Also, King Charles mentioned Hawaii so in the past, so you can see his interest in, in the climate with that event as well. Okay, now on other interviews, uh, you had talked about COP28, but can you just like say briefly what it is and then how King Charles and the Pope are connected to this? King Charles is going to open the event at COP28 on December 1st, just like he did at COP26 in Glasgow. Um, two years ago, so he's going to open up this event. He's the first main speaker, and he's going to call, he's going to make a call to unite, to act, and deliver on a seven year covenant for for deal for seven years through 2030. And so that's that's the whole focus of this conference of the parties is to uh, bring about a seven year deal. And then Pope Francis will open on December 2nd to embrace all of the faith together as one to move forward on the climate agenda. And he'll ha have his own faith pavilion set up as well. Yeah. Now, th speaking of the Pope, uh, I was pretty shocked when the information that you sent me regarding what he said, I've just got to read this. I mean, first of all, the UN said, okay, the 2030 agenda remains our commitment to the ch children and youth of today so that they may achieve their full human potential as critical agents, okay, the children, as critical agents of change and torchbearers of the 2030 agenda. But, um, okay, but then, Craig, what did the Pope have children recite at that recent event? What did he have them say? Pope Francis asked all 7,000 children to chant, nature is our future. And so they, they chanted this like a, I, I would say like a Gregorian chant, nature is our future, nature is our future. Right, um, which is like really, really scary because it's almost like nature is our God. And I wanna read this because this is something that you had sent to me. So, okay, Pope Francis at a recent Vatican event asked the 7,000 children to chant what you just said, nature is our future. But then they had the children asking questions and um, one being, can children save the earth? And the Pope expanded on that theme. And he said, are you concerned about the environment? And questioned, he was like, questioned, can children save the earth? And this is what Pope Francis said. Yes, because you are simple and you understand that to destroy the earth is to destroy us. 
we must guard the earth. This is what he was saying to the children. Do you understand this? If you destroy the earth, you destroy yourselves. Um, and then he uh, also said, now let's say it all together slowly um, to the, these 7,000 children without shouting to destroy the earth is to destroy us. So they have the children now totally involved in making sure that everybody complies. This with the push with children, it reminds me of the scripture in Matthew 10, 21. Now brother will deliver up brother to death and father his child and children will rise up against parents and cause them to be put to death. This is part of an end time prophecy. Why would children do that except what we're talking about? Because they're making them being the guardians now to watch. Is everybody complying? Yeah, it's it's one of their control tactics. And what we're seeing coming in from this event from December 12th is control, 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 control. They want to control every aspect of your life. Now, what are some of the things that you think that uh, King Charles will be discussing then at COP28? Well, to, to understand that, you'd have to see his speech from COP15 in Copenhagen. And, and from that event, he said there's seven years to go. So that he was telling people back then how far it was till COP21 when they would do the Paris Agreement. And so we're going to see that reiterated here in the next couple of days, that there's a time limit to make to uh, embrace their goals. And that's a new New Green Deal is basically what this boils down to. So he's going to call the world to unite, to act, and to deliver. And they're putting these videos out on a weekly basis now with COP28. And if you go to the COP28 UAE Facebook page, it, it, it's right in their heading that they're stating that there's seven years to go. Right. And then at COP28, then they, uh, how many people are going to be there? I mean, is it like over 40,000? That they're saying they're stating 70,000. So, so, so we got all these numbers. So we got the 7,000 children. We got a seven year plan. We got the 7,000 children. We have 70 mandates coming from King Charles in the next seven years. And then you have the 70,000 uh, people going to this event. So a lot of, a lot of sevens involved in, with this event. Right. And then they're going to be calling on leaders, world leaders all over the world, then to start making policies to implement, um, uh, what their citizens need to do to comply so we're not going to be having any climate issues. I mean, what kind of things? I mean, yeah, I that, and it's, that's two years of really strong implementation, but it's followed by three more years. So the next, the next, they're going to assess it in two years at COP, what it would be COP 30, see how, how their progress is. And then, and then they go another three years before, before the stock take begins. So this is a seven year plan but it's broken up in two years plus three years plus plus two more years. Yeah, and we've covered it in other videos. I mean, one, you know, just even like the 15 minute city, that's that's really their plan too, to make sure everybody stays put, everyone is in this limited uh, space, but that's part of their thing because they wanna cut emissions and basically what, 20, by 2030, they wanna make sure no one owns a car? Yeah, yeah by 2030, you're, you're, you need a horse. <laughs> yeah I'm so if, i guess if you're amish you're you give you're a step ahead <laughs> yeah maybe i will join the amish <laughs> they know how to cook they know how to do everything <laughs> you know how to do everything without electricity so this doesn't this sdg thing does does not really affect them other than god's wrath poured out on, on mankind they know how to live without electricity craig can you explain then the british israel connection so in on march 21st 2023 Israel and the UK signed a seven-year agreement as a roadmap that defines their bilateral cooperation until 2030 and will serve as a living document. And the vision for this seven-year agreement was first, partnership, second, on anti-Semitism and anti-Israel bias. Um, the third is on defense and security for the state of Israel. The fourth one is trade and investment for the state of Israel. So there's a business partnership we're seeing ahead of this COP28 between Israel and the, and the UK. The fifth vision is for cybersecurity. The sixth one is for science, innovation, and technology. The seventh one is for climate. So the, we're seeing this huge climate push and, and Israel and the UK lead, lead this event. The eighth one is on health. So they, they want to control your health. And we saw how Israel pushed the agenda back in 2020. They, they were in the lead with uh, pushing what you need to do with your body. The ninth one is on culture, and then the tenth is education your, of your of your children. 
And the 11th one is development and then gender equality. So do you think that this agreement that they uh, Israel made with um, the UK, that this is talked about in prophecy because it'll be broken and- uh, it, this, is, this is part of the whole picture. So, but it's the Paris Agreement that they, he breaks as a whole that this supports, but this deal with specifically with Israel is connected to the Paris Agreement, and this is the deal that they break right here, the one signed in March. But it doesn't go into effect until until December twelfth. What we have planned ahead of us is a planned major catastrophe. And back in nineteen ninety five, there was a uh, card game put out called the Illuminati card game, and they have they have one of their cards is called Into Tape. And it says below that the rapture happens, and I'm just going to summarize, and, and it, it spoils their plans. So with this, we see King Charles being called after December 1st to make a statement on alien abductions. And uh, and it's like, it's like I can't believe I'm talking about this because I hate talking about aliens. But uh, <laughs> I totally but anyways, understand. They're, they're, play, they're playing this card called the, the Rapture card of the Illuminati card game. And uh, they're, so they're playing this card for this event for COP28. So I thought that was very interesting that they, they're planning for some sort of catastrophe and that this Rapture card or alien abduction card is being played. Now, who made that game? Um. I mean, I mean, was he, it not? I think his name's Steve, Steve Jackson. Yeah, un- total, totally unbeliever. I would say it's like a t- tarot card. So there's a bunch of tarot cards. There's, there's well over 400 cards. They have Prince Charles that nobody can touch him. And they have an image that looks like Pope Francis as the Pope ruling during the tribulation. Um, yeah. Now, interesting, because I want to, in a second, talk about what you said regarding that King Charles is going to be making an announcement about the UFOs. But I just want to let everyone know, I've been doing some videos with L.A. Marzulli concerning the disclosure, how they want to start programming people to believe in aliens and everything, which we know is really fallen angels. Um, but anyway, OK, Craig, so. I mean, you sent me this information that they want him to deliver uh, uh, information about that UFOs are real or what? Okay, tell me more about that. There's a there's a film going out on December 1st on this alien UFO and alien abduction type thing. And the the royal family has long been interested in UFOs. And so there's a call upon King Charles to make a statement once this this film goes out on December 1st that there's a call for him to make a statement following this film on, on the UFOs and that he needs to get a hold of Joe Biden to uh, make a statement on UFOs and alien abductions. Yeah. Now, when I was reading what you had said, then it was like a push to uh, urge uh, Joe Biden that he would just finally come out with it and let everybody know we've got, we have, there are aliens and everything, right? To finally disclose everything. Yeah. So this this is the plan by Klaus Schwab that there's going to be a global shock. Several weeks ago, we had these, everybody got an alert on their phone to prepare the world for this major catastrophic event. They're telling us that there's going to be a major global shock, but they're not telling you what it is. And they're indirectly telling us it has to do with an alien abduction. Well, right. (laughs) Their whole thing is- I can't believe we're talking about this, but it's kind of hilarious. No, (laughs) no, I totally understand. But I, I was waiting for something like this for a few years because I always knew they have to always come out with something to unite the world, like unite the world on that we have a problem with the climate. Now, unite the world that we now have um, these aliens from, you know, somewhere else that, uh oh, we better unite so we can fight against them or, you know, and it's interesting too, because in my other interviews that I've been doing on this subject, uh, basically part of the agenda is to say that they seeded us. So there is no God. That's what they're going to say. There is really no God. It's them that seeded Mother Earth. But anyway, we're not going to go into all of that. Um, yeah. Now, what is? Tell me what the name of the documentary that they're going to be putting out concerning the uh, King Charles or the UK um, that that they're going to be putting out concerning UFOs. The film is called The King of UFOs. The person behind this film, his name is Pope. So so Pope states there is somebody who could pick up the phone and say there is something going on in the United States. He could ask for a full classified briefing. So this is uh, the name of this film is The King of UFOs. And, and it's aimed towards the royal family and King Charles. Uh, very interesting. Yeah, I, I'm absolutely unbelievable. And the, the documentary states that Charles can request ministers for the UK parliament to compile a report if there is ever any unexplained activity in the UK airspace 
as it would be a potential defense and safety issue. So this okay. is 12, day, 12 days before the confirming of the covenant of COP28. Right. So see, the whole thing is all very, very connected, um, which, you know, we're going to have to do another interview after COP28 and and after this whole documentary comes out to see now more of what they are saying. Um, yeah. Now, I, I want so at COP28, I might, I might add this at COP28, at, on the, around the 12th, King Charles is scheduled to do his Christmas address. So it's pre-recorded approximately 12 days before Christmas. And so he'll have his Christmas address ready at, at the close of COP28. Wow. And, and that he, could be connected to the confirming of the covenant. Ah, very interesting. Okay. Now, uh, I found uh, you had sent me information, too, regarding uh, King Charles wanting to be the peacemaker uh, with the whole Israel um Palestinian conflict. Uh, why don't you explain that? So King Charles will be meeting with, with other Arab leaders at COP28 to discuss peace in the Middle East and, and peace between the Palestinians and, and, and the state of Israel. So that this is a major event at COP28. And you know, it should run between November 30th and December 1st. So he's going to be meet, meeting with Arab leaders to discuss the peace with Israel and pa the Palestinians. And this plays a factor as a possible 18th SDG, the Sustainable Development Goal of, of the um, Agenda 2030. Right, which we talked about the other 17 goals, and we can just we put that up so you can all see uh, about the 17 goals, which is on our other um, interviews. Um, now, is there anything else concerning COP28 that you want to talk about? So the year was 2020, and with it came a major catastrophe. The whole world was shut down. The church in the whole world was in lockstep. And the teeth of this new beast system sunk deep. And so we have to ask, what was the reason behind this? So January of 2020, King Charles delivers to the world the plan for the Great Reset. And uh, it was a 10-year plan. And today we're three years into that. And we've got seven years left. And Klaus Schwab at the same time says, we have a narrow window of opportunity to seize control. And so we see that now coming to an end as the window is closing towards a seven-year covenant. So we didn't know in 2020 how long the window would stay open. But based on Bible prophecy, the world has to appear somewhat normal for, for this to happen. So people are eating and drinking and, and marrying. And we didn't see the marriages happening in 20, late 2020, 2021. They shut that down. So it's like when things get normal, they're, they're going to usher this in. And so yeah. December, so December 3rd is the first ever cop devoted to peace and so their subject is peace and security 2023 they say wait a minute you've got wait you've got to repeat that because when I, when you told me that when you sent me the information about that i'm like oh my gosh so say that again it's the so first december 3rd is the first ever conference of the parties devoted to peace right and the bible sc scripture bible prophecy when they say peace and safety and safety sudden destruction mm -hmm. so 20, and so i when i think about that i i imagine the tower of babel and all the world united against God. And then God comes down and confuses their language. And uh, I, it, it appears that this event, with their symbol, the Burj Khalifa in, in Dubai as their symbol, he's going to come down and confuse them once again. This shows how that it's all playing together. So it, it's really interesting to uh, watch this. But they state 2023 represents a crossroads on climate, peace, and security. Strategic opportunities exist to strengthen the evidence base and undertake climate informed prevention, peace building, peacekeeping, and stabilization efforts. They believe if we're all connected on climate, that we'll, we'll be at peace and security. Right, right, right. Um, now, there's something that I, yeah, I was just thinking, I was looking at something, some notes over here that you had sent to. Uh, something very disturbing, too, that the Pope said regarding, I mean, they, they have the whole climate thing they you know um connected to poverty like they're saying we're going to stop poverty and that's all connected with the whole climate uh you know their plans but the thing is what have they ever done to really really stop poverty i mean like if you really how do people believe them when tell me what great plans they've had before in stopping poverty but then this thing really got me now i'm probably not going to say it correctly uh craig but 
this was with the Pope's, um, okay, Laudate Deum. So that's after two years, that's their, that's their strengthening of the Laudato Si covenant. Oh, And okay. so what we're seeing is what played out with Laudato Si is the forerunner of this, of this COP28 agenda. And so after two years, he strengthens the deal. COP28 will strengthen the, their seven-year deal in two years. He may say that once again, like he did in 2015, that he comes in his own name. So that's that remains to be seen. And uh, this is historic that the Pope has ever showed up at a, at a COP event. So this is the, the first time. And and if you go to the any of the Vatican sources, they're calling the Pope the prophet, and he's the prophet on climate. And so we see Revelation 13 being on full display, really, at this COP event with the climate king and the climate prophet. Wow, wow, right. So between King Charles speaking there and now uh, the Pope, this is a first ever of what's going on here. Um, and when you were talking about, just for some people who watch this video, who have no idea when you said the book of Revelation, that's written 2000 years ago, that's just another Bible prophecy. Uh, it seems that the Pope is fulfilling the false, being the false prophet. Yeah, he's he's definitely fulfilling the false, false prophet. And you can see the same pattern being played out, but two, it's a two year setup that comes prior to this Paris climate agreement. So Laudato C started in 2021. This new green deal starts in 2023 and it will we'll follow the same pattern. So that they have this forum at the COP28 and it's called the COP28 Business and Philanthropy Climate Forum. And it's ran by none other than King Charles and his Sustainable Markets Initiative. And they have some very interesting points. One of them is on digitalization, telecoms and technology accelerating a, a sustainable digital transition towards 2030. Trillions for Transition is one of the events. This is the trillions at King Charles Sustainable Markets Initiative disposal. So King Charles can spend the money however he pleases through his Sustainable Markets Initiative. And then building city resilience, and that's on sustainable cities. So we have that we have mayors and such meeting together approximately at the same time, discussing the C40 cities. Right, and, which, uh, uh, which you and I did a video on that, and you explained yes. so it. I, those are the three ma main highlights. There's, this is a two-day event that King Charles will over oversee. And he opens that event as well. So he's opening that event and opening the whole COP event December 1st as well. So there's he plays a major, major role on December 1st. Bill Gates will be at this event and he, he'll probably be discussing his 50 by 5. So there's 50 governments that need to combine for the next five years. So it's a, it, once again, we see this five-year implementation with heavy global taxation through corporations. So the corporations will raise your price on everything to pay for this climate agenda. Everybody will be taxed heavily taxed on their fuel, so the fuel prices are will go through the roof as well. Well, right, and then on other interviews I've done with you, it looks like they'll they'll start taxing people on how much they're consuming food, how much they're eating. I mean, yes, yeah, that's, this is that's actually part of the, the the philanthropy climate forum as well is is on food insecurity, and so they're taking food insecurity will be ran by King Charles, and he he opened up a a, a forum on, on his birthday on his seventy fifth birthday. November 14th for food security. So he's he's the one behind the scenes pushing for food security and to control it. Right. OK. And then with all the push of fake food like uh, Bill Gates and um, <clears throat> fake meat and fake everything. <laughs> well, I go to the local grocery store now. You have to read the label because there's so much fake. It's fake food and everything. Right. Either fake food. Like I don't want to eat it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> right. Either fake fake food or bugs are in, in the ingredients. And um, yeah, you could be safe with blueberries, bananas. Um, anyway. <laughs> COP28 will be the first global stock take of the Paris Agreement. So the stock take comes after after seven years. So we have seven years since the implementation of the Paris Climate Agreement in 2016. COP28 has the vision to deliver on the pillars of the Paris Agreement, which I have, I'm, I'm gonna show you. So I, I, I'm probably the, the only person in my state other than Bill Gates that has the Paris Agreement. <laughs> and uh, it, so I put, there's four pillars of the Paris Agreement. It's fast tracking the energy transition and slashing emissions before the end of 2030, transforming climate finance by delivering old promises and setting the framework for a new seven-year deal on finance. So this puts all everybody's money into one pot. And, and then if some country gets a flood, then all these other countries have to pay for the, 
the reconstruction of that island will more than likely be the island nation. So the U.S., nobody's going to give the U.S. any money, but the U.S. and and the EU and, and uh, Russia or China have to pay for all these climate catastrophes. The third pillar is putting nature, people, livelihoods at the heart of climate action. So, so people aren't first place anymore. It's nature. Nature is first. And then mobilizing for mo the most inclusive cop ever. That's everyone. The motto is to leave no one left behind. And I don't even know what that means. <laughs> <laughs> With they, they don't want they don't want anybody. Everybody has to comply to the sustainable development goals. That's that's what leave no one behind means. It's one hundred percent compliance, or or you're out. Um, I and, and see. We know, it, we know based on tribulation time what happens in the tribulation. It's the Christians that will at that time the saints that will that will be left out. Right now, the digital when you were saying things being digitized, uh, does that have to do with the mark of the beast? That would eventually that's going to lead to the mark of the beast. So th there'll be another pandemic, and then they'll bring about a digital ID after that uh, pandemic. So part of the Paris Climate Agreement are these seventeen goals, and it's for full control and full control of you and I. And uh, I call it the all seeing smart card. And so it's the I. I over climate action, and it's for sustainability, monitoring, assessing, rating, and tracking you. And so it's an actually acronym of SMART. And the roadmap, the, the roadmap and comprehensive plan to control you is through the through the SDGs. This is the how they're going to implement the Paris Climate Agreement for every human being and how they live until the end of 2030. So they have to transform every single human being within the next seven years. And uh through this plan. So this smart plan is what I actually meant. Um, this agenda sets up for the world for a tyrannical leader known as scripture as the Antichrist. On December 11th through the 12th of December, final negotiations will be underway to strengthen the Paris Climate Agreement for seven years. So on November 30th, they're going to declare their plan of action that they will release to the parties their rough draft for the seven-year deal. The first day of COP28 will be on the World Climate Action Summit. This this goes for two days. The third day is for they'll be discussing health, relief, recovery, and peace. This this is the whole day that's re for peace and security on December third. The fourth day is for finance, trade, gender equality, and accountability. So here we have the smart card being played out again. December fifth is on energy and industry and a just transition for indigenous peoples. December 6th will be a multi-level action, urbanization, and environmental transport. So they want to change the way how we move about. On the 7th of December is a day of rest. That's their Sabbath. It's a Thursday. December 8th will be focused on youth, children, and December 9th will be on nature, land use, and oceans. So December 9th connects with what King Charles wants to proclaim based on his document on May 5th to bring about 10 principles each year for the next seven years on how we should on land use and the oceans and december 10th is on on their control of food agriculture and water and then december 10th through 11th and the 12th will be final negotiations for their seven-year deal right so even if uh some of you are watching this after the whole event um, basically, Craig outlined everything that they're going to be doing. I mean, basically, it's going to be control on in all of the issues that we've talked about, uh, all the categories we talked about. Several days ago, the, the the religious leaders met. So there's a COP28 press release, and it says the COP28 presidency receives the Abu Dhabi interface statement for COP28 at Global Faith Leaders Summit, and it issues several points how the these religious leaders are trying to push for this climate agenda. And it reveals how that they're trying to get all the world to uh, and, and all the face to save Mother Earth. So this is a Mother Earth religion that they're pushing at COP28. I'm just going to briefly state this one. There's, there's, a, there's a, on October 4th, 2023, COP28 put a document out. It's called the 2023 Synthesis Report on GST. Well, that's global stock take elements. So this is a 65 page, 700 point document right here. That you can look up on the web and uh and read I, there's way too much it's you would spend forever going through this document it's the background and mandate for a seven-year covenant so they have to produce a seven-year deal as per the paris climate agreement 
no later than December 12th. And that's what this document is about. And there's 700 points, 701 points of this document. Another interesting document to look up is go to irena.org. And this shows how they're going to implement all this within the next few years. It's called Tripling Renewable Power and Doubling Energy Efficiency by 2030. Crucial Steps Towards 1.5 Degrees Celsius. And on, on its cover, it has 2030. And that, that's the document. So this is all is about changing how we get our power in the next seven years. They'll transition to wind power and transition to uh, solar power. Okay, so I want you to paint a picture, um, Craig, of then what do, what do they want the world to look like with you know, with their whole implementation of like COP28, everything, all their plans. What do they want the world to look like? And by 2030, you will own nothing and be happy. That's where they're headed. And we were told that way back, there's a video online that stated that from the World Economic Forum. That's their total goal. And, they're, and the way they want to implement this is through this draft resolution, I'll say. This was agreed upon at the UN General Assembly. We'll act with urgency to realize its vision as a plan of action for people, planet, prosperity, peace, and partnership, leaving no one behind. We emphasize that, that eradicating poverty in all its forms and dimensions, including extreme poverty. So they want to do away with all poverty. We're all the same. So this is glo- what Donald Trump says. This is global communism. So Donald Trump knows this agenda. That's this is why he got the U.S. out of the Paris Climate Agreement. He knows this is full communism. But with Joe Biden back as president, now we're back in this. So it will leave no one be left behind, literally. Right. And then we found out that when we did the other interview that Build Back Better, which uh, Joe Biden said, which others said, too, because he wasn't the originator of Build Back Better. But Build Back Better was like the 15 minute cities where you build back better and you're living in your house and you're allowed to go beyond, you know, 15 city, uh, 15 minutes, but not beyond that. That was what Build Back Better was. So anyway, yep. <laughs> then they state we, we, we reaffirm the 2030 agenda is universal. And so and then it's, it, it calls it the Millennium Declaration. So this is a plan for 1,000 years. We also reaffirm that climate change is one of the greatest challenges of our time. So they believe that man is can control the weather. We commit to bold and ambitious, accelerated, just transformative actions anchored in international solidarity and effective cooperation at all levels. So this goes from your, your top government officials all the way down to your local mayor, the people that work in your city and your school districts and down to your teachers. And uh, it says we will devote ourselves collectively to pursuit of sustainable development, including through international cooperation. So anytime they say that there's international cooperation or they're strengthening the goals, this is how they're confirming the covenant with many, with everyone. Ah, Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's to strengthen resilience, including through pandemic prevention. So there'll be another another one. Preparedness and response. And so they're planning for another another event. We remain resolved between now and 2030, that's seven years, to end poverty and hunger everywhere, to combat inequalities with and among countries, to build peaceful, just, and inclusive societies. We commit to achieving a world in which humanity lives in harmony with nature. King Charles wrote a book on harmony and his plan to bring about harmony several years ago, and uh, that that we're seeing that play, played out. So I would say that compares to what happened in World War II with the book that Adolf Hitler wrote. So he, but nobody would read it. But if you read Harmony, you can see the, the whole plan that there is no God and, and that King Charles must replace that image of God. And so we see that with the Terra Carta. The Terra Carta has his crown over all the world. So it declares in heraldry, it says, I'm king of the world. And then with the, the Astra Carta, which is the second seal of King Charles, that declares him king of the whole universe. You can show those symbols and and you'll see the head it's right in the heading, especially Astro Carta. It tells you right in the heading exactly that he is to care for the wonders of the universe. Unbelievable. Right, right, right. It's Bible prophecy coming to pass. And then sustainability development cannot be realized without peace and security. So they can't do the sustainable development without there being peace and security. So they have to have a, a declaration at this event for peace and security, then the sudden destruction. The 2030 agenda remains our commitment to children and youth of today. So their focus is on on your children, that they may achieve their full human potential. That's uh, your children is digitized. And uh, that, that's their goal within the next the next couple of years. Ooh, okay. And, uh, how, how, do they, how would they digitize the children? I mean, is that connected with uh, Neuralink? It'd be, it'd, 
probably newer link. They're saying what is on your phone today will be eventually be in your body. I just read that this morning on the on their agenda. It's like, I can't believe this. So what we're doing with your iPhone today or your Samsung phone, they'll be eventually be inside your body. And this is what they want to implement within four years. Right. Now, are they going to... Are they going to be pushing for children f- first or just everyone at the same time? It'd be, it'd be, it, looks, it appears to be everyone at the same time. Hmm. Okay. But the, it's the children that are going to love that. It's like, it's like a toy. So <laughs> Our, us adults are a little slower to, to learn technology. So, but, it, but it'll be the children, the young people of the earth that will accept that. It goes on to say, our world has changed drastically since the first SDG summit in 2019. And since we adopted the 2030 agenda in 2015. And we can all agree with that. We are concerned about the persistent and long-term impacts of the pandemic. We must meet the moment by taking immediate measures to scale efforts to achieve the 2030 agenda. So they're scaling things up. They're going to strengthen the goals. And and if you don't comply, you can't function in society. Then there's a call to action, turning our world towards 2030. So their their whole goal is 2030, 2030, 2030. that's, That's the year. So this is the counterfeit millennium that Satan is trying to usher in. Um, yeah, absolutely. And with everything that you're saying, too, it just seems like they'll be pushing like credit scores, just like uh, China. Yeah, and there's no agenda 2031, no agenda 2033. It's it's all agenda 2030. They don't, they're they staying very loud and clear that they will not kick the can down the road any longer. So I've been watching this since 1992, and they've, they've been kicking the can for years and years and years. Like, it's never going to happen. But now they're now they're really pushing for it. And now they have the mandate to do the seven-year deal. So as we commit to taking continuous fundamental, transformative, and urgent actions at all levels and by all stakeholders, that's everyone, 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 to overcome the crisis obstacles facing our world. We recognize the urgent need to take actions necessary to reverse declines and accelerate progress to achieve the 2030 agenda, implement the SDGs. So everybody has to live by these SDGs. If you have a Samsung phone already, the little emblem is on your Samsung phone. And if you click on it, I believe it sends money to towards the SDGs. So don't click on it. Take it off your phone. <laughs> because we commit to making cities and human settlements inclusive, safe, resilient, and sustainable through implementation of the new urban agenda. Which is basically That's, about the 15-minute city. It's a 15-minute city. Right, with so everybody they're, they're on a bicycle. Stating, they're stating, every, stating very clearly that this is their agenda, to, and it, they're going to implement this very, very fast. So I'd say within two years, they're going to mandate that those 15-minute cities. It's mandated. We know there's another pandemic coming within within two years. Well, right. I mean, they're they're saying it's like not even like that. We've we're saying it. They've been saying there's another there's another one coming. Um, yeah. So go to the Gates Foundation. It's there. So if you dig deep enough, it's, Bill Gates has been talking about it for years and years and years, and that the next step in their agenda is to take a splice of human DNA out and replace it with a synthetic DNA so that you'll live forever. And this may be why during the tribulation that people will wish that they could die, but they can't because they've taken something that keeps them from dying. Yep. I've thought about that. Yep. Absolutely. So yep. That's just another fulfillment of Bible prophecy. You have what's going on in Israel. You're probably going to have the fall of Damascus, the fall of, of Iran's nuclear plant and uh, possibly the Ezekiel 38 or as well so that you have a lot of things coming together all at once and then on the on the icon of the cop 28 um, event you'll see in its center a, a temple a temple to mother earth that has not been built yet then you'll see mother, mother earth in the center and to the right of mother earth you'll see the pale horse the pale horse of the apocalypse oh wow okay so this is for the cop 28 emblem this is the icon for cop 28 okay Right. And in, right in its center is is their God, Mother Earth. And then she gets a temple, which will be built in Jerusalem for all for their what they propose as God. And then it comes with the pale horse. And the pale horse is, you know, from scripture is brings death. Um, yeah. Craig, thank you so much for this update. Now, I want you. Can you just uh, share with everyone where they can find you on Facebook? Because you have amazing updates with your posts, uh, really giving us you know, what keeps on going on. And of course, we're going to be doing more interviews. But yeah, if you can just give that information on Facebook. It'd be Rapture Watchers in all caps on, on Facebook. Then there's Signs of the End dash Rapture Watchers on Facebook. That's a page. Then my personal page you can follow. Don't don't friend me because I have too many. <laughs> and and then I also have YouTube. And it's under Craig Bong 1573. Those are all short 90 second videos. But they, there's a lot of information packed in those. And there, there's a long one coming out uh, on King Charles and how he is the Antichrist. 
Okay. All right. Well, thank you so much. This was uh, lots of information, lots is going on. So thank you so much, Craig. With King Charles about to make a statement regarding aliens, which we know are fallen angels, and that he's pushing Biden to disclose what's been hidden regarding aliens and UFOs. You've got to see the interview I did with L.A. Marzulli, where he's done incredible research on the disclosure and how the news is all of a sudden reporting on this and really what they are about to reveal.